again We can hardly wait Come flood this place We're ready now It's all about to change Let your kingdom come Let your will be done Let your fire fall Let your fire fall Sing with me church Open the heavens
Sing a little louder Sing a little louder well, Sing a little louder Sing a little louder well, Sing a little louder In the presence of my enemy well, Sing a little louder And louder than the unbelief well, Sing a little louder My weapon is a melody well, Sing a
I want you to think about that for a moment tonight. How great is our God? Just think about it for a moment. Think about when the Lord had to pull up his sleeve and pull you out of a pit. He had to restore your broken relationships. He had to heal you. He had to heal your mind, your thoughts, things that were going on inside of you. He had to bring back a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter that was away from the Lord. Gave you a job, gave you a family that you probably don't deserve. I mean, I mean when you really think about the words of this song, how great is our God. He paid a debt that he did not owe. He was a substitute, took our place, carried the sins of the world on his shoulder for us so we could live for him, come to this house, worship him. I mean, God is great, folks. God is great. God is great. So let, let's just sing it one more time. And when you, when you sing it this time, close your eyes and remember who you were before you met Christ. And some of you got to remember not even before you met Christ, during the times that you're walking with Christ. Right? Because oftentimes, how many know God is not just great when he saves us from our sin. God continually is working in our lives. Right? And so as we sing this song again, just close your eyes. And I mean, just, just let it roar, man. Let the neighbors know that there's church going on in this house tonight. Is that all right? So let's sing that song again, Kay. How great is our God. And let's sing it like it mean it tonight. Amen. Let's, let's just worship the Lord with this song. In this place hallelujah God is great God is good he's worthy to be praised is that right let me pray for tonight's service that God would just meet us speak to us how he wants to speak to us that we won't leave here like we came in you know there's something about hunger and thirsting for for god you pull it out right yeah you, 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 you want god so much that the heavens open and just you activate his presence because his presence is there but you know you could come in with a hard heart you could come in just doing church religiously and you're going to leave the same way you came in but if you came in tonight saying i need more of god god is going to saturate you tonight do you believe that Help me pray. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we just come before you, Lord God. We thank you 
for allowing us to come into your house tonight, Lord God. We thank you for the worship service, Lord God. We thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord God. And Father, we thank you for the word that we're going to receive tonight, Lord God. Open up our hearts, soften our hearts to receive every word that you would want to deposit into our life tonight, Lord God. Let us not leave here the same way that we came in, Father. We pray for salvations. Uh, we pray for signs, wonders, miracles, deliverances, Lord God. Uh, we pray for a Holy Ghost fire, Lord God, uh, to just light us up, Lord God. Uh, Lord God, to burn inside our souls, Lord God, for more of you, Father. So, Father, have your way tonight, Lord God. You get the glory. You get the honor. You get the praise, Lord God. In Jesus' name, uh, amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Turn to somebody. Tell them they're in the right place. Welcome to Praise Chapel. God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All the teenagers can go to their uh, class tonight. So teenagers, you're here. You want to go to the class tonight in the annex. You're more than welcome to do so at this time. God bless you. Do we have any guests here? First, second time here, amen, that I do not know or have, haven't been able to meet anybody here. We want to just say it back there. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody else? If I missed you, amen, we just want to say thank you for being here. Uh, hope it's not your last time. We have service every Sunday, 10 a.m., right here. Powerful time we have in the Lord every Sunday at 10 a.m., every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And one of the ways, uh, good ways to get connected with people in a church is we offer what we call small groups. There are life groups, and those are taking place on Friday nights in various homes, uh, we have uh, small groups that take place on Mondays and Tuesdays throughout the week. And so uh, you can go to our info table in the breezeway here after service. If you want to get more information on that, I encourage you to do so. Uh, you could also sign up. If you haven't been baptized, there's baptism sign-ups on the table as well. We're going to be having a baptism coming up shortly. And so make sure you sign up for that. And so let me give you a few things here. Uh, this uh, next Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday is our next food bank. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise for that. Last, last food bank, we fed 300 families, right? So we're just continually believing this is going to grow. And so we appreciate, amen, Brother Milton and Sunshine who, who head the food bank. We appreciate them. Amen. Where, where's Milton at? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I uh, praise. I, I never. I, I'll never forget the name Milton because Milton. I always seem to stay at the Hilton when I go out of town. So, Amen. Praise the Lord. So I always think about my man Milton. All right. So anyway, uh, that food bank. Next food bank is March 11th at 8 a.m. Volunteers needed to be here by 6 a.m. And, and and volunteers, thank you so much for serving in this ministry. We appreciate it. And uh, we know it's a sacrifice, but man, it, it blesses my heart every time I see all the volunteers that come out and serve food to the community. So God bless you. Hallelujah. Um, also, don't forget to register for our conference. Pre-registration, obviously, it's a free conference. Amen. Uh, but this helps. Uh, the seating is limited. And so we want to make sure everybody registers. So get on, on the app and register, pre-register today on the church app, Praise Chapel CF on uh, your app store there. Um, we do have some exciting things. Uh, one thing that's coming up, it's, it's quite a ways away, but it's, but it's worth mentioning because I want our, our whole church to get involved in this. And I, remember last year I had Tony Cook come. Tony Cook, and he did a leadership seminar for us. And so he's coming back again, and he's going to do a Saturday leadership seminar, and he's going to preach for us Sunday morning. But the leadership seminar you have to register for, and it's, and it's on a powerful topic. The topic is called the end of the spectator church. 
And so uh, it's going to be, this is, I'm opening this up for our whole church. And so I encourage you guys to sign up, register. The, the link is already on the app where you could register for individual or, mar- or, or marriages could register for that. But Tony Cook is a, is a Christian historian. He's, a, he's one of the leading voices in the church world today. He's authored many books and the Lord has blessed me and my wife, to build a great relationship with him and his wife. And so they're just a blessing to us, and he's going to be with us. Amen. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great time. Tony Cook. Hallelujah. Also, um, uh, I believe that's it. Amen. That's all the announcements. Don't forget, Sunday morning. Be back with us Sunday morning and be a part of all that God is doing. Well, tonight, I'm excited. Amen. Now, I have a lot of you know, uh, a lot of friends, a lot of guest speakers that, that we ha- were privileged to have come through here and minister to us. But tonight is uh, special because I got a childhood buddy of mine that's going to be preaching the gospel, amen, to us tonight. Uh, he, uh, he grew up with me right here in the church. We were just little church brats, amen. But Amen. Now we're doing a work for the Lord. And so uh, I've asked him to come minister the word of the Lord to us. And this is uh, Philip Hernandez Jr. is going to preach for us. So I want you to give a praise chapel hand clap for Philip. Hallelujah. Oh, how's everybody doing? Man, it's been a minute since I've been here. Uh, I told my wife when I was getting ready today, I said, hey, you know, uh, I'm going to wear my Raider jersey. She said, she said, why are you going to wear your Raider jersey? I said, because this is the place that where, where I started essay school, you know. This is the place where I learned how to be a Raider fan. <laughs> but I thank, uh, I thank my friend, Pastor Jay, uh, for inviting me. You heard him say, we go back, childhood friends. Um, I've done all kinds of things with Pastor Jay. Um, traveled, ministered in music, played ball with Jay. A matter of fact, when, when my dad was pastoring here in the church, what we'd do on a Sunday, we'd, we'd have two services, and uh, we'd, each, we'd each ask our dad for like 20 bucks on a Sunday. And on that, with that 20 bucks, we would hitch a ride to the LA Coliseum, and for literally 20 bucks, we could buy a ticket to the Raider game and have a hot dog and a soda. And we did that almost every home game for a long time, man, as long when the Raiders were in LA. And I have a lot of good memories with Jay. Just a little side note, your pastor Jay taught me how to gamble. <laughs> Not like slots or anything like that. Okay, this, this, your pastor is one confident dude. The reason why I say it is because uh, when we were kids, he used to tell me, hey, we're going to go play two on two. And there used to be a small little uh, elementary school right there in the city of Downey. And uh, I'm like, all right, let's go. He's like, bring your baseball cards. I didn't know what that meant. I just, hey, bring your baseball cards. I'm like, okay, we're going to go play basketball, but he wants us to bring our baseball cards. So him and I would go to the, to, the, to the school, and two other dudes would show up. And I'd be sizing these guys up because, of course, I'm the shortest one out of all of, of the three guys in the bunch. And I'm looking like, what are we going to do? And I see Pastor Jay go over, and he goes, I'm going to put this card down. I'm going to put this card down. And the other guy goes, well, okay, well, I'll put this card down, and I'll put this card down. And we end up playing basketball games for cards. From that, thanks to Pastor Jay, I had to dial that 1-800 gambling issue if you have. (laughs) That's good. But Jay, I appreciate your friendship, man. Because I have been through some stuff. And you never judged me, but you loved me. And we don't talk all the time, but when we do, it's like we just spoke that day before. I appreciate your friendship. It means a lot to me. I will never forget, through all the storms that have taken place in my life, you only caring 
about me and loving me. And I appreciate your friendship, and I thank you for that, man. If you have your Bibles, go to the book of Exodus, chapter 33. Um, I titled this message, His Presence Over Promise. And uh, we're going to see what God has for us. I, I was telling uh, a buddy of mine that um, I told God I didn't want to... You know, they, they hear, they hear the cliche, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans, right? I told God, man, you know, I don't want to preach. I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want to do those things, God. I just want to be a dude that comes to church, sits down, hears some worship, and I, don't want to, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't want to do anything like that. And man, these last, since, since, since the end of, end of December, the end of 2022, some crazy things have been happening in my life that I just, uh, yeah, I had a guy come up, my dad, one of my dad's pastors in his church, he asked me, hey, I want you to, I want you to do a little devotional on a, on, a, on a Wednesday night for prayer. I said, okay, cool, we'll do that. And then he goes, oh, I, I made a mistake. You're preaching on a Wednesday night. The Wednesday before, I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, man. But God moved, and I, I kind of got away from that, and I was like, oh, man, whew, that's cool. But then God began to impress some, just push something upon me. Is that Trino right there? What's up, Trino and Dina? It's good to see you guys, man. Um, God started to just do something in me, and I, and I found myself... Don't know why I found myself putting all these notes together, and a few weeks ago, I get a text from my friend, Pastor Jason. He says, hey, bro, would you come preach for me? And I said, yes. So let's see what God does, amen? <laughs> That's right, yes. Remember, when the king calls, say yes, just go. Let's pray real quick. Lord, we thank you, God, for this day that you've given to us, Lord, another day of life, another day of breath, God. I ask you right now, God, that you would just open up our minds and our ears and our hearts that we might receive from you this evening, God. Father, I pray, God, that your presence be here with us this evening, God. Lord, that your anointing, that you would anoint my lips and the words that I speak. Lord, I pray that, that my heart would be your heart, God. Help me, God, to be a vessel that you work through this evening. In your precious name we pray. And the church said... Amen. Everybody there, Exodus 33, verse 1. We'll start at verse 1. Then the Lord spoke to Mo Moses, depart, go up from here, you and the people who you have, whom you have brought up from the land of Egypt to the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, to your descendants, I will give it. I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hivitite, the Jebusites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst because you are an abstinent people, and I might destroy you on the way. Verse 4, when the people heard this sad word, they went into mourning, and none of them put on, their, put on his ornaments. For the Lord said to Moses, say to the sons of Israel, you are an obstinate people. Should I go up in your midst for one moment? I would destroy you. Now, therefore, put off your ornaments from you that I may know what I shall do with you. So the sons of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments from Mount Horeb onward. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitched it outside the camp, a good distance from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. And it came about whenever Moses went out to the tent, that all the people would arise and stand, each at the entrance of his tent, and gaze after Moses until he entered the tent. Whenever Moses entered the tent, the pillar of God would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent. And the Lord would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of the cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would arise and worship, each at entrance of their tent. Thus, the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses returned to the camp, his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man would not depart from the tent. Verse 12, then Moses said to the Lord, see you say to me, bring up this people. But you yourself have not let me know whom you will send with me. Moreover, you have said, I have known you by name. 
and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray you, if I found favor in your sight, let me know your ways that I might know you so that I might find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up from here. For how then can it be known that I have found favor in your sight and your people? Is it not by your going with us so that we, I, and your people may be distinguished for all other people who are upon the face of the earth? The Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing of which you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight, and I have known you by name. Then, the Moses, said, then Moses said, I pray you show me your glory. So here we have in Exodus chapter 33, we know Moses was, was, was called, was the chosen, chosen leader to, to, to lead God's people out of Egypt. Out of Egypt, a people who were af if afflicted and enslaved for over 400 years. Moses is now charged with this task of taking God's people and leading them out of bondage, out of captivity to a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, I know if some of you think, well, what's milk and honey? Are you really talking about like milk and honey? Well, no, it just means a fertile land. Exodus chapter 3 verse 8 says, So I have come down to rescue them from the land of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. We know that this land was promised to Abraham because in Genesis 15, 8 through 21, it says, On the day the Lord made covenant with Abraham, saying, To your offspring, I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river of Euphrates, the land of the Kenites, the Kenzites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Raphaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. Church, the Bible is full of God's promises that can encourage us in our faith. Faith and hope. In fact, faith and hope are dependent on promises. There's something we expect or something that we look forward to. A promise can be an anchor, something that you hold on to. And if we trust a promise that we have been given, it will become life-giving. When you have a promise, it's, oh, man, if I told you, hey, I promise you I'm going to give you 100 bucks, you'd be like, Ooh, at the church, you'd be waiting for me like, yeah, I can't wait. I know I, it's coming. You're expecting. More importantly, we know that we can trust the promises of God. Numbers 29, 13, God is not man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not fulfill it? Church, when God says or promises to do something, I can guarantee you that he is going to do it. The question I have for you tonight, though, is do we long for him or his promises? Exodus chapter 33, if you go back to our text, says, The Lord told Moses, leave this place, you and the people you brought up out of Egypt, and go to a land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give this to your descendants. I will send an angel before you and drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, and those other crazyites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go with you because you are an obstinate people. That word obstinate could be stubborn, uh, refusing to change. Um, and God might destroy them because of that. Now, for some little bit of reference, what had taken place is Moses had gone up uh, to, to receive law, went up to the mountain. And upon coming down the mountain, God, while, he was, while he was up there with, when he was up there on the mountain, God tells him, yo, dude, you need to go back to your, to go back down to the camp because your people are tripping. He says, man, they've, 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 they've turned from me. They're, 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 he called them, other, other scriptures called them stiff-necked. They're stiff-necked people. They've gotten rebellious. They've gone into some crazy thing like, and, 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 and you need to go back down to them and tell them this is what's going to happen. See, the children of Israel got tired of waiting for Moses to come down from the mountain. So they got around, they got Aaron. 
And they told Aaron, come make us God, a God who will go before us. This in Exodus chapter 32, even in Mo Moses, the chosen leader of the, of the Israel people, he's reduced in chapter 32 by the children of Israel as just some fellow that delivered them from Egypt. You see, church, even though the Israelites had seen the invisible God in action, they still wanted familiar gods that they could see and shape into whatever image they desired. And in that moment, in their rebelliousness, in their idolatry, in that very moment, the promised land became more important than his presence. The Bible says God was sorely displeased with his people. That he, and even though, but here's the crazy thing is that even though God was so disappointed, I know there have been times in my life where I've disappointed God. I've done things that I know, I, man, I shouldn't have done that. I blew it. I dropped the ball. Yet God's hand still carried me through those situations. You see, God was sorely displeased with his people, yet he would still send an angel before them to drive out their enemies. God was not going to go back on his promise of giving them the land he swore to their forefathers. But because they were stiff-necked, he wouldn't go with them. His holiness wouldn't allow it. In effect, church, God denied his people the closeness of his presence. He would not be going with them because of their rebellious, and I, their rebellious idolatry. He was giving them the promised land. I said I would do it. I promise you I would. And when I make a promise, I mean it. But I'm not going with you. Are we content to receive God's promises alone? Or are we wanting the presence of the one who gave us the promise? God's presence is the very thing, church, is the very thing that brings value to the promise. Without him, it's an empty promise. In verse 12 of our, te in, verse, in verse 7, it says, Now Moses used to take a tent, pitch it outside the camp, some distance away, calling it the tent meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent meeting outside a camp. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrance of their tent. So basically what Moses is doing in this portion of Scripture, he's, he, he, it's called the tent of meeting. What he's doing is he's basically going out, the, the Bible says to inquire of the Lord, but really what he's going out is to plead forgiveness. He's going out there to inquire from the Lord. He's going out there, say, God, man, look, I'm here to, man, don't, don't judge your people. Don't, he, he's, he's speaking on behalf of the children of Israel. Moses meets with God at the tent meeting, begs and pleads with God to go with them. Please, Lord, go with us. Moses said to the Lord in verse 12, he says, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people, the Lord replied. My presence will go with you and I will not and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from her. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me, with your people, unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all other people? So here you have Moses begging God to go with us. Go with us into this promised land. Please, he was, he, the reason why he wanted God is because he wanted the assurance that it was God who brought them there. In verse uh, 15, 
Man, look at this thing. Technology stinks. <laughs> Verse 15, he says, Then he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up from here. What Moses was saying is, Okay, God, you said your presence is going to go with us, but I just want you to know that I don't want to go any further unless you go with us. Moses desperately wanted God to go with him as they entered the promised land. God had already promised he would. But Moses was saying, more than the promised land, we want you, God. Church, the promised land meant nothing if God wasn't going with them. Verse, verse 16, Moses boldly pleaded with God, how will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go up with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? How will anyone know you are pleased with us? You know, like most people, all of us, I know, maybe, I'm pretty sure everybody's angels here, okay? I, 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 I know I have done some things in my life. I've wondered at times how God could use me, or how God, could, how could use, how God would use me, how he could use me. Because I've been through some things, and I've let God down plenty of times. I've had times where my life was at a complete mess. And I've wondered, God, in this mess, how will people be able to see you in me, even though I got all this stuff going on? How will anyone know that you are pleased with me? I've had financial struggles. And I thought, God, how will anyone know that you are pleased with me unless you give me that job or that promotion? How do I know, God, you're on my side unless you give me that job, that promotion that pays X amount of dollars this month? How, how, they'll see. If you just give me that, they'll see. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me through this mess? God with us in the mess is what testifies to who God is. It's God's presence that sets us apart. We call, we call on God's presence every single time, whether it's in worship. I'm here to tell you, church, worship is just a song with words if his presence isn't in our worship. Revival is just another church service that we attend to on, on Wednesdays and Sundays. If its presence isn't there, it's just another church service. We're just like me and my group of gamblers that I had to be a part of a, a AA because Jason got me into gambling. We're just like them. God's presence that sets us apart, not success in temporary things of life. It's why God encourages us to seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. That's Matthew chapter 6, 33. God's presence provided direction and comfort. It provided safety, strength, and joy. It was his presence that set them apart from all the peoples of the earth. His presence solidified their identity as his chosen people. Church, without the Lord's presence, life is empty. It's the Lord's presence that makes life worth living. Psalm 63.3 says, your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. Psalms 84.10, better is one day in your courts than a thousands elsewhere. Just to be with him. Maybe you're here and maybe you're looking for that promotion. Maybe you're in a job and you're, you're looking for that promotion and, and, and you're either, maybe it's a degree or a job promotion or, or um, a particular career path that you're looking forward to. The truth is all those things mean very little if God isn't in it. 
That large amount of money in the bank means nothing if God isn't blessing it. It's not how much money we have. It's how much of his presence do we have. The more we empty ourselves of our own wants and desires, the more he can fill us. Everything is meaningless without him. Unless the Lord is in it, it means nothing. He brings meaning and clarity and healing and hope and forgiveness. Church, as we live this one life desiring God's presence, we should also implore him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. Because the promise is more valuable only because who the promise giver is. When the prom you see, when the promised land becomes less important to you than his promise, you'll say things like this. Don't even ask me to go to the land of promise if your presence won't be there. I don't know about you, church, but I want God's presence. I don't want to make decisions and choices in my life if, if God is not in them. Maybe you're here, you're a young person, you're in college, and you want to go to school, you, you're going to school, or you're looking for that new job, and yeah, it might look all great, but what does God say about it? Have you talked to God about it? What about that, what about that, yeah, okay, what about that job? It's going to keep you out of church on Sundays, uh, it, or, or, or what, you're not going to be able to make it on Wednesday nights, and man, trust me, I have a job. I watch your guys' service on, in traffic on home on Wednesday nights, because I can't make it to my dad's service because it's just traffic and I work real late. But I want God's presence in everything. Like I said, worship is nothing but another song with words if his presence isn't there. Revival is just another church service if his presence isn't there. That job or that promotion is just another job and promotion if his presence isn't there. We need to be a people that strive for his presence above all everything else. God, the promises are great, but it's you that I want. And it's you that I want to go with me. And if you won't go with me, then I'm staying right here and I will not move until you tell me to move. I am not going there unless you're going to be there because if you're not there, that's not where I want to be. God, you're here, and so therefore that is where I want to be, and I will not move until you say you move. It's like the song says, when you move, I'll move. When you go, I'll go. When you stay, I'll stay. No matter what, I'll follow you because it is you, it's your presence that I desire over the promise presence over his promise lord if you ain't if you ain't going with us i'm not going yeah, i don't know i don't know what uh what you guys are going through or you know i guess can we get the piano um, I don't know what, I don't, I don't really know a lot of people here, but I know this, God had begun to put this on me for a while because man, it's really easy to, it, it's especially me, man. You see this, something new and you want that. And you're like, man, I can do that. I can, I can move here. You know, for a long time, me and my wife have been talking about getting out of California and, you know, we, we make good money and whatnot, but we are like, let's, man, I want to go to Tennessee. I want to move to Tennessee. And uh, I started thinking about this, and I was convicted because I was talking to a friend, and he said, you know, moving out of California is cool, and moving out of Tennessee is, is moving to Tennessee or, you know, or Texas, whatever, that's, that's great. 
He says, but, uh, but why are you moving? I told him, dude, have you seen the house prices here? Man, it's crazy. I said, man, you, could, you go to Texas, you could buy two houses on one lot for like 250 grand. And he's like, well, why do you put God in a box? I said, what do you mean? Why am I putting God in a box? He's like, well, don't you believe that God can provide what you need here to do? And I'm like, I told my wife, man, I ain't thinking that way no more. I'm not thinking, I'm not looking for temporary solutions. I'm not looking, no, because I know that God here is where I need to be. So we don't talk about moving anymore. <laughs> and God has opened some doors for me and my wife. And, and I'm grateful, but it's all because we came to a place where we realized, hey, it's not. I want to be where you are. We want to be where he is. Let's stand. Every head bowed, every eye closed. And as, you're, as you close your eyes, and I want you to look within yourself and think, what are your dreams, goals, and desires? There's a reason why. I mean, you think the, 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 the prayer of Jabez, he said, Lord, bless me, bless me indeed. But whatever you do, don't take your hand from me. See, it was his presence that was more important than the blessing. What are some of your goals, your, goals, your dreams, your desires? What has God promised you? I don't know everybody I don't know everybody here but maybe you don't know Christ. You don't know the God we serve. You may have came here on a Wednesday night and said, "Oh, let's, you know, came here, got invited with a friend or whoever, but I'm here to let you know that God's promise is for you too. His promise is forgiveness, salvation, an abundant life. But you're here tonight and you don't know who God is. And you can say to yourself, you know what? I want to know God. I want God's promises for my life, but I want to put God first and I want to make him first in my life so that I can then inherit the promises that he has had for me. That's you tonight. Raise your hand. You don't know who God is. You're not saved. You don't Maybe you're here tonight, and as you've been looking within yourself, you're saying to yourself, what is it? What is it that I want, God? Maybe you're in the midst of making some decisions, whether it's a career change or you're looking for that promotion on your job and, or whatever it is, financial situations. And you need some clarity. You need to be like Moses and say, God, unless you go with me, unless you go with us, unless you go with me here, I don't want it. Maybe you're here tonight. And you want to come and seek God at the altar. And you want to say, God, it's your presence I desire over the promise. Lord, even in your place where 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 my life might be in a mess. My life in a mess, but I want your presence. I want your presence there with me. I want your presence in this mess so that I can testify of your goodness. There's people at the altar. If you're there, I don't know if we have altar workers. We could pray with people. I'll, I'm going to pray with people. 
Jesus, we want your presence above everything else. Come on, just begin to lift up your voice. Father, we love you, Lord. You're so good. It's your presence we seek, Lord. Our all we want is you. Young people, Lord, move the cloudiness, Lord, from all my life. Come on, church, worship Him, Lord. Jesus Oh Lord me with the love Hallelujah Hallelujah We worship you Lord we worship We desire you, Lord, over everything else. Fill us, Lord, with your presence. Jesus. So worthy, Lord. now God with your presence we need you Lord help us Lord to trust in you trust in you above everything else If your presence don't go with us We're staying here, Lord, and we won't move Hallelujah Oh, Jesus, we love you, Lord Hallelujah. Magnify your name. Yeah. Father, we long for your presence more than we long for the promise. want your presence in our worship we want your presence in our whole world we want your presence lord at our work in our family lord in our children lord worship you lord Give you glory, Lord, give you glory. Magnify your name. Come on, fill us, Lord. Lift your hands and just tell God, Father, fill us with your presence, God. It's your presence, Lord, to fill us, Lord, right now, God. Maybe there's some decisions that have to be made, God. God, help us, Lord, give us clarity in our decision-making, Lord. 
We want you more than anything else, God. It's your presence that heals the broken heart. Oh, Lord, heal the broken heart. Magnify your name. Jesus, we love you, Lord. that was how many appreciate that word amen what a great word that was thank you philip amen praise the lord amen we need god's presence hallelujah what a blessed night let me let me pray over you before we dismiss don't forget be back here sunday now the cafe they are serving uh potato cheese soup perfect for a night like tonight so stop by the cafe have you some soup let me pray for you father we just pray a blessing upon everybody here, Lord. We thank you for the word. We receive it, Lord God. Lord, let it, let it just soak in us, Lord God, for the rest of this week, Lord God. We need your presence everywhere we go, every decision we make. We need your presence, Lord God, to go with us, Lord. And so, Father, we thank you for the word and the message you brought here tonight and Philip, Lord. So, Father, I just pray your anointing upon each and every one here. Keep them safe, traveling mercies, and let them come ready to receive a word from God on Sunday. 
We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise Chapel. We love you. Fellowship with one another. Visit the cafe. Grab some good stuff. God bless you.